G'day, welcome back to Project Brewpeg, story of a sunken fishing trawler converting into a global expedition and research boat. Today I'm going to give you a bit of a look around some of the jobs that we've got going on behind the scenes with regards to our boat build. We've got a bed that we had to make, Trev works on the arms for our stabiliser. We do some painting downstairs for our new crew rooms, I kick a wall, and finally we've got a crane for the back end of Brewpeg. The little job I've got going is that mattress is a new one. And down the bottom here, started building a frame for it. So this frame here is going to eventually be in the, uh, what are we, starboard cabin um, up the front of the boat. So that big hole in the middle is a big storage area. And then if I come way down the back end of the boat here, you can see that piece of ply sitting over there is the piece that we cut out. And that's going to be mounted on piano hinges with gas struts so that we can lift up the whole mattress and everything. And we'll have heaps of storage underneath that bed. I want to do a little trick on this corner here. This is the corner that's basically closest to where you're going to smack your feet if you're walking past. It's a tight little spot between this and the wall. So what I want to do is round this off. I'm going to use a five inch disc to give me my radius. It's all glued together now so we can lose those. Never the one to write up a song for just anyone. I, I was always the one to find myself lost in all conversations. Oh, cause I've always been told that things were before if you keep on waiting. But then you came along and proved me wrong. I was so mistaken. Cause you glue all the pieces back together. Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better. Yeah, you, you're making me want to try forever I feel so free Oh, my sweet baby I was never the one to give up the ghost No, I was so stuck I kept on playing my part I wanted to give up Cause nothing was changing but with you it's so clear And now that you're here I see colors in every spectrum Cause I finally learned my lesson Cause you glue all the pieces back together Yeah, you, you take all my wrongs and make them better Yeah, you, you're making me want to try forever I feel so free Oh, my sweet baby
back together Baby, you take all my wrongs and make them better Baby, you're making me wanna try forever I feel so free Oh, my sweet baby Right, that's the start of our board. It was a lot easier cutting 25mm stainless steel than it was cut that out. <laughs> It's a grey old day. We've got a bed frame here. We've got to sand, get that epoxied. We've also got to sand and epoxy the room downstairs, so some of the walls. Um, and then Tony has uh, dropped off the white hardtop ultra, so that's going to be the paint for the walls downstairs. So I'm going to get stuck into those jobs, um, ready for those cabins to be used shortly. Trev, over the back here, is sorting out some stuff for our stabilizers. So I'll show you what he's doing. So this is stabilizer number one, the first one we put on. And you can see we've trimmed basically the, there you go, where that orange thing is. You can see that there's a, a, a notch cut out of that fin. Um, and that's so that the arm can lay down flat and horizontal onto the wing surface. There you can see it's nudged right up against the wing surface. See that mark there? We need to trim that off. That's the, the angle that the deck sits on. And what we're doing is we're going to be cutting some... Um, 20 mil steel plate, uh, where is it, here it is, here's a little template. So that piece of ply there is the shape that we need um, and that's going to be mounted to our two stainless pads up on the deck. So by having the wing down here like this, the arm down here like this, sorry, we could just get the 9 inch and just do it in one cut so it's a nice clean lovely straight line. Now that we've got it all sanded, I made these little brackets just here. They're gonna, you can sort of see them sticking out along the edge there. They're gonna act as um, stops. The hinge is gonna be on this back side over here. And then that's gonna be the front that you lift up. So that's gonna stop the bed from sort of sinking down.
Now that we've got that sanded, it's basically, it's not a heavy sand. I'm just using 60 grit and I'm literally just trying to scuff off any high spots. Um, this is not a boat to make pretty. This is a boat to get bloody in the water and down to Antarctica. So that's done. We're going to go and get some white paint on that and start calling this a room. Let's go see what Trev's doing. Drilling. How's it going? Still. Getting there? Is that the first one? Yeah, that's the first one, isn't it? All right. As you were. Don't mind me. I've just got the half inch pile of holes. Do you ever feel like you're being watched while you're working? In the middle of a hole. Yeah, fair enough. Do we need to buy another packet of holes? Hmm? Do we need to buy another packet of holes? Yeah, but ones that aren't off centre. Oh, fair enough. They weren't very sharp, the last set that I bought. No, but where you start off is... This is true. Relevant point. Drill press, dead, once more. What we've found, the grub screws that go in this part here, they click onto this part of the shaft there, have died. So what we need to do is, we're going to drill a hole through that top hole you can see there, we're gonna drill all the way through. We're going to, if we get rid of that, if we drop the shaft down slightly, we'll be able to see the top disappear down. Focus, there we go. See that top disappear? That happens when the drill press is moved up and down. You sort of see it disappearing in and out there. What we're going to do is lower it right down like so, and then drill a hole right the way through those grub screws. So through through this area here, right through both sides of the air, put a pin, 8mm pin all the way through, and hopefully that's going to be strong enough. It's going to put a lot more load on this, so we'll probably break that next, but at least it's going to get the drill press going. The drill press gets a really hard time, it's sort of getting towards the end of its life and one of the things I'm thinking of doing is actually, um, if I keep it, I'm thinking about getting a um, the hub at the top machined up out of just steel um, and then I'll be able to do a really decent join between that, that shaft on the inside and the outside hub because I won't be limited by this ridiculously small wall section of that die cast piece. So yeah, if we do anything we'll probably try something like that. We're going to do a bit of a catch up, get this side of the um, the lid, so the lid goes in that frame that's over there. This is the back of the lid, so we'll get that done epoxy tonight so that we can flip both of them over, sand all of the runs, and then, yeah, get the top coated tomorrow. We got back from town and there's a pallet wrapped up. I know what this is. It's pretty damn cool. Let me show you. Look at this. So this is a crane that we're going to use on the back end of Brew Peg for now. Um, Brenton at AgPro Products, one of our viewers, got hold of us and said, hey, we've got a crane, we've just taken off our ute, we don't need it, and we can definitely see that you guys can. So um, he got hold of us and sent this up, um, which is awesome. It came from the other end of the country. We got, it's a 12 volt um, winch, so to see a little pulley and hook and everything like that. And then in here, we've got like the controller for it, all the stickers and everything to make it safe. And then, um, yeah, we wanted to put some stickers on to say thanks, so we're going to stick them on the crane itself. 
and um, yeah, we'll hopefully have that mountain on the back end of Brewpeg soon. So that's incredibly awesome. So Brendan, I just really want to say thanks. This is going to make a massive difference to our project and also getting parts up and down, getting Jess up and down, all that sort of stuff. We were going to build a crane. You've saved us a huge amount of build work by being able to just install your crane onto Brewpeg. So it's awesome. Every time we look out the back, we're going to know, you know where that crane came from. We're going to remember that you guys contributed like this. So I really want to say thanks. Um, on behalf of both me and Jess, it really means a lot to us. So cheers, mate. Thanks. So that's the last coat of resin put on these so they are ready to go so hopefully tomorrow I can start stacking these into the room um, this frame isn't fully finished so what we're planning on doing let me spin right around you can see we've got a curved corner what we will be doing is installing a lee board on this side um, closest to the camera here and that's going to stop obviously people falling out of the bed but also the mattress falling off the bed as well so there'll be a, like a 50 mil lip all the way around um, and that'll extend down to the floor so that we can have this as storage as well. This is going to be fun. Yeah. I should take it back so that you don't know where my heart is at. Don't want you to know. Okay, so now that we've got the wall sanded both sides. The white has one coat uh, of polyurethane and this smaller wall here, the, the partition that I just fitted, that's got one coat of epoxy on this, one solid coat of epoxy on this side, but it's a pretty blimmin' thick coat. We put it on with a, um, a fluffy roller so we get a really thick coat. Um, and that's why I gave it a skim with the sander. Um, the paints are compatible, I don't have to worry too much about that, they'll chemically bond, but I needed to scuff, scuff off any sort of marks that the uh, fluffy rollers have left on there, any bits of hair and stuff that have come off. Um, so the plan is now we'll get uh, we'll get the mix up the polyurethane. We'll get another couple of coats in this room, one behind me, and the second coat on this wall here. Um, but the exciting part of having that bit done, we can start making this into a room. So all of this stuff that's piled up here, basically randomly piled, needs to move across into this basically dark space. That's where the storage is going to be. We're going to use the 30 odd milk crates sorry, that we got from our Brisbane trip. We're going to start cleaning those up, put all the stuff into those and just start randomly stacking them behind that wall for now. And that will allow us to get in here and start building the bunk bed so that when the crew arrive, um, we've got at least one room functional. And as soon as this room's done, we're going to move over and start doing the one on the other side of this wall. We gutted the room up the front here, so you can see piled stuff up on the sea berth at the top. But it was so that we could empty out this corner here. So there's now nothing um, on that corner, and that's so that we can get this bed that we've been making in. So let's get started. Jess is pulling this one apart. This used to be our old bed, and um, it was always a temporary bed, but yeah, now's the day it's going. The day of reckoning. So this is her editing suite. We're going to be putting wraparound um, workbenches all the way around here. This is going to become a, a decent sized office in this boat, which is going to be pretty awesome. Woodworking is in very well. Yeah, come up alright, eh? I'm happy yeah. with that. Brilliant. Sorry. Sorry. Oh, we've got a scratch now. Oh well. That's it a few while. 
This is how we hold our pictures up, um, ma magnets. I've never actually taken this in fully assembled. Yeah, right. So I don't know if it fits, is kind of what I'm saying. Well, once you're in, you're right, aren't you? Well, it's either going to work or it won't. <laughs> Sounds worse than it is. Yeah. Okay. Right. Oh. Beautiful. Let's get put the hinges in. We can lift it up. Woo! That is very cool. And that's a finished bed, so it looks like it's taking up all the room in the world over here. We knew it was going to be tight, but we might actually be able to push it over slightly towards the wall. We're going to do cupboards and storage down that end. We will probably do storage sort of along that wall. There's going to be a lot of insulation along there too. Um, and then this top bunk here is actually going to get moved up, so if you have a look at the construction on the bottom, you can see there's um, 35 millimeter thick timber used as slats and there's also 25 mil lost in that edge there. What we're actually going to do is shave all of that off and put a piece of 15 mil ply, much the same as what we did on the bottom of this bed here. We're gonna do that up there and that gains 80 mil without doing anything to the, um, to the bed, but we're also gonna lift the bed up um, slightly as well. So we're gonna gain a lot more headroom for the bottom bunk here. We're also gonna do another one of these eh? here. Yeah, yeah, we'll do a sea, seaboard running along the edge, so this will be a proper sea berth once it's finished, but yeah, for now, um, it's a regular bed. And comfortable. Yeah. You got ice like summer sky If it's my good kill, I'd die And now it starts to rain So let's enjoy it I can't